going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out the Pi KVM version 4. So let's get started. Now, I do want to thank or sending this over to me for review and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now they do have a Kickstarter going on right now. So I'm going to leave that as well on the bottom in the descriptions. Now, those of you who follow this channel for a long time, you already know that I love this product, the Pi KVM. Now I've built many series of this though, original from scratch. Then I got the version three. Then I built one with Raspberry Pi Zero. And I basically use this every day. Now the version four is definitely an upgrade from the version three that I'm currently using. So I'm excited to be checking this out. So for those of you who don't know what a KVM is, KVM stands for keyboard, video, and mouse. It's basically used so you can have local access to a computer remotely. Most big companies like Dell or HP has this type of feature on their servers built in, either through uh, ILO or iDrax, where you can actually log in remotely through a web browser so you have local access to that server. This basically does the same exact thing, but it's not attached to any server. You can plug any device into this. This also has a web interface that you can log into and connect to your devices remotely. This also means that you're actually able to remotely go into a computer and connect to their BIOS if you need to change some settings, which is not possible with remote desktop applications like TeamViewer or AnyDesk. As far as the features go on the Pi KVM version 4, the first thing you'll notice is that they replaced the Raspberry Pi 4 board with the CM4, which is a huge deal because now we are actually able to use 60 hertz. The CSI bridge on the CM4 is has a much higher bandwidth than the Raspberry Pi 4, which allows for this. And the reason why this is such a big deal is because a lot of BIOS or devices like Android devices lock it so you can't use anything other than 60 hertz. So there are times where I can't load into a BIOS or even test an Android device because it only allows for 50 hertz, but this has resolved that problem. Also, the new feature on Pi KVM 4 Plus board is that now you get LTE, which is cellular network. This add-on board gives you the ability to add a mini PCIe modem and a SIM card. So when you ship this to any client, as soon as you plug power into it, it will get cellular signal and you will have internet access to it. On the Plus board, they also added a barrel connector, which supplies 12 volts, two amps, and this resolves a lot of the power issues that the Raspberry Pi 4 had which required a specific 5.1 volt USB-C sustainably just to have the best performance. With this 12 volt 2 amp barrel connector, you won't have that issue. Also, because now it's running on a CM4 board, these are low profile, so it's a lot smaller and easier to carry. And honestly, I think it's a better design. As far as the mini goes, this is basically a version three with all the new features. On the top, you have this LCD display that will give you all the information that you need, IP addresses, uptime. In the front of it, you have your ATX control, which is your IPMI, uh, your on-the-go cable, and then your input for your HDMI. On the opposite side of the device, you have your Ethernet port, your serial, USB-C serial, uh, SD card slot, and then your five volt input. That's what you use to power the device. On one side, you actually have these dip switches that you actually don't need to use. Uh, it's actually planned for debugging purposes and stuff. And then you also have a, I think this is called a Kensington lock. It is built with the aluminum construction and it's got some weight to it. Cracking this open, you're gonna see inside is using a CM4 board with a huge heat sink. On top of the CM4 board, there's actually a spot where you could stick in a, a Wi-Fi antenna. Now there is a hole on the side of the case where you could actually loop the antenna out of. This will give you Wi-Fi access. All in all, the Pi KVM Mini is a really good standalone device if you just need to use this at home, your home office, your server setup. This is a really good device. As far as the Pi KVM Plus, on the bottom half of this is exactly the same as the mini. Now the plus part of this is the added board on top, which will give you a 12 volt barrel connector, USB, and then a RJ45 serial. Now the USB also can be used as storage. So if you have a USB thumb drive that you wanna add more ISOs to, you can use that as extra storage. And in the front, it also has another USB with HDMI output one and HDMI output two. For now, the HDMI output one displays the Raspberry Pi information. So you'll get your serial console basically on your monitor. Then HDMI 2 will eventually be a mirrored output of the HDMI in. So you actually be able to connect this to a monitor and see what's going on on the input of your HDMI. They're still working on that and that will be coming soon. 
Now keep in mind that these two are prototypes, so you are not gonna get exactly the same thing that I'm getting. Uh, I know for sure that the screen's gonna be changed, so you're gonna get a better screen than this one. And some of the components that are inside here are 3D printed, where they are gonna have plastic extrusions for them. That I already know when he was sending it over to me, so I knew about certain things on this. As for the Pi KVM version four, when we open it up, you're gonna see that this actually has a fan built in to keep everything cool. It also has a mini PCIe slot, so you can stick your LTE modem. And on top, you have your SIM card slot for your LTE. LTE. Again, this has the same purpose. It has two holes up in the front where you could use your Wi-Fi antenna and then now for an LTE antenna. Again, this is also built with an aluminum construction, so it's got some weight to it. The main thing that I like about the Pi KVM V4 Plus is that it does ship with LTE. Now, there are plenty of times where I actually built one of these, which is a Raspberry Pi Zero HDMI. This is the same as the Pi KVM built in here, and then I have to send it to a client, set up Wi-Fi to it, and get that going. But for now, if I need to do the same thing, I can send them this box, have LTE hooked up, have tail scale hooked up so I have a VPN connected to it. So as soon as it gets internet, I could connect to it and I could configure servers, computers, or whatever it is just by sending them this box without having to make it look like this where it could fall apart. I'll worry about trying to get Wi-Fi hooked up to the Raspberry Pi Zero. The overall operations of the Pi KVM is pretty simple. It's just like the version three if you ever used it before. You log into the browser, default password is admin, admin. You can always change that. Hooking it up to a device, all you need is HDMI and then the USB-C OTG to the USB port of any PC. So this is what you first see when you log into the site. And I do love the new change on the logo. I did tell the developer about this because I do like this. It looks a lot more professional. Now you do get a few of these options. I did unlock the VNC option so I could actually use VNC instead of the web browser. But otherwise it's pretty much the same. Um, you could go into KVM and this will be presented with that desktop that I was talking about. Now, this is not a team view or anything. This is straight up recording whatever the HDMI is outputting. And what's cool about this is that you can now actually use audio. Um, I've talked about this before on a previous video, but they do have audio support now. And because the default now is also uh, H.264, you do get a better frame rate as you're using this. Now, on the top right options, you have your JPEG quality, H.264 kilobits. Uh, the GOP, max frame rate, uh, the mode. We're used to using MJPEG, but like I said, now they switched to H.264, which is a better streaming capability. Depending on uh, what type of device you're using this on, you could use absolute or relative. Um, normally, absolute would work perfectly fine. It's just your mouse moving along with where you're dragging the cursor. Relative works for like games and stuff and some certain tablets, like touch point stuff. Um, you also have a few more settings here where you can mute the HID input events, uh, connect the main USB. So now you have USB pass through. That means uh, that USB port that was on the Pi uh, 4 Plus can now be passed through uh, directly to a server. Uh, you have some LED indicators and uh, asking if the confirmation, you know, when you close out this page, it will confirm if you want to close it or not. You still have show keyboard if you need to. So in case you want to type something, you have your show keyboard. Over here is your ATX controls, which I do not have anything hooked up, but this is primarily if you do have that IPMI hooked up, where you could power on, reset. And I'll actually show you the power LED and the HDD, HD indicator. Drive is where you can upload your image. Uh, so if you got uh, ISO that you want to install or Windows 10 you want to install, you can upload an ISO image over here, select it down in the drop down, and then you could pass it through as a CD-ROM device over to your PC. You have your macros, so if you don't want to type 4,000 things, you can actually save or play the macro. Same thing with text, if you want to just transfer whatever you're copying and pasting, you can transfer it through here. And then you have your shortcuts. As far as the functionality goes, it's pretty smooth. It opens up pretty quick, I'm moving the windows around. I mean, like I said, it's not one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty quick for what you need to do. And again, let me see if I get some sort of uh, YouTube Nova Spirit Gaming. goes right into the site. Well, Audio new, does pass through, so you can actually hear it. But it's still Ubuntu based and the installation is still the same. So after you get the Lutris installer installed, we're gonna have to... It's not necessarily needed when you're trying to diagnose a computer, but if you're trying to diagnose something with sound, <laughs> this actually could. Now, one of the biggest features that you won't get with any team viewer, Rust desk or any desk, is that if I hit this power and go right into restart, Normally at this point, those remote desktop applications would have cut you off by now, but I actually still have physical access or local access to the computer, 
where I'm able to go into the BIOS and change settings if I need to. And here we are. This is the BIOS of that PC that I was just playing around with. And yeah, I could go in. You can change all the settings that normally you don't have access. And that is it. I, I gotta say, I really like this Pi KVM version 4. There's a lot of features that they added to this. Mainly is the 60 Hertz that they added. They have the HDMI pass-through being worked on right now. So you'll actually be able to pop that onto the, another monitor as you're streaming. Uh, they have PoE that's gonna be coming soon. That's a work in progress. Audio is definitely working. And Wi-Fi and LTE. With these new additions to this device, it actually makes it even better than some of the stuff that you can buy on the market that actually is more money than the device that you're gonna get for here. Again, I will leave a link down in the description below uh, leading to the Kickstarter and also leading to a blog post about all the updates that they changed. If you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. Or if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. Now I know I'm gonna be making a follow-up video for this after I use it for a week or two to see if there's any bugs or problems that I might run into or other modifications that I do to it. So you'll be seeing that video as well, probably in a month or so. That is it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.